Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the, the books. books, your online librarians. And we're here with a special St. Patrick's Day rainbow of fun book haul for you. This one's Kira's idea. It's a lot of fun. It's not something I probably would have thought of, but I could now think of like whole displays for it and bulletin boards and everything else. Next year, maybe I will. I'll admit, I got the idea from a coworker. Thanks to the anonymous book coworker that I won't name. The infrared spectrum first? <laughs> I think we better start with Roy G. Biff. Okay. How do I like show them the infrared spectrum? We could do sci fi books like The Black Widow, The Marvel Black Widow, Red yeah. Vengeance. Yeah, they're not quite infrared, are they? No, but. Well, maybe if we put an infrared filter on the camera, then we can do whatever Ooh. books. Okay, let's just start with red. For red. Fault Sight by Dan Krokos. This follows some genetically altered teenagers who escape from their handlers only to start a world war that now they have to stop before it's too late. This is a very fun action-packed series. This is actually the second one. So if you haven't read Fault's Memory, I would recommend reading that one first. Age range? Age range, I'd definitely say it's anywhere from fifth grade all the way up to even 12th grade. So that would be ages 10 all the way up to 18. Orange. And Illuminate. I could not resist this beautiful cover and I am actually currently listening to this one and reading it. It's got the cool plastic cover. You've probably seen this one by now. And then underneath it's got this cool part where stuff's redacted, but it's been out for over a year and I've heard that it's best for grades nine and up, but I have not read it. So I haven't really attached an age range to it yet. And it was done by both Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I heard that there was a graphic designer involved in designing this book. You have areas of regular text and you have these cool pages that I I really wanted to see how they narrate these. <laughs> how do you narrate that? Good question. So that's why I am listening and reading this one at the same time. There are pages with redactions. There's pages that are emails and almost like you were looking at a whole bunch of documents from something, almost like primary source documents and electronic records and you put them together in a book. Anyways, I just want to see how the narration goes along with all the different kinds of documents in the book because I don't see how some of them could be narrated, but I heard that they managed it and it was fantastic. For so. yellow, we picked Queen Dog by Bridget Heath illustrated by Alejandro O'Keefe. This was reviewed in a previous, so we'll put the link below. I think it actually was the last picture book book call we did. I like this book because it's just a fun, sweet, short story. It's about a little dog who's recently had to cope with a baby coming into the house and it's dividing her owner's attentions and she doesn't like that, especially because the baby is constantly screaming. I love the pictures. They're the prettiest, cutest little pictures I've ever seen. It's kind of fun too how the dog dog learns to adapt to having a baby in the household, but the pictures are just so adorable. So if you haven't read this one yet, I think you need to, even if you're a grown up. Green! Quinny and Hopper, Partners in Slime. I love this series. This is a middle grade reader. The thing about this book is it's gonna go as low as they can handle this kind of a plot line. So it could go down to grade two, but really it's grades probably aimed maybe three or four through six, but it's gonna be just fine being in seventh grade book as well. So you could definitely put it in middle school. It's by Adriana Brad Shannon and Charles Santoso. We reviewed this in one of our first weekly reads, I believe. Partners in Slime is about Quinny and Hopper and one of them is a boy and one of them is a girl, which is why this book is perfect for everybody. There are chickens, there's tonsillitis, there's missing a museum, there's of course bullies and complete misunderstandings and, and true friendship and humor. It's just funny. So if if you like Melon Head or books like that, realistic ones, Clementine. Ivy Plus Bean by Ivy Plus Annie Barrows. Yeah, these are, this is a great book for the kids who like that kind of stuff. I think reluctant readers would like this one too, just because it's so funny. Blue, but this is Gemina by the same author as the other one, the Illumini. Illumini was a New York Times bestselling book and this is the sequel. From what I can tell by the description, this follows the story of two different characters, Nick and Hannah, who are in a deep space space station and it gets invaded by an elite alien force. But again, you've got the really cool cover, the plastic see-through kind of cover. We'll cover up that part because that part might be the spoiler. I want to know how they're going to narrate this. Names on here, Cami Garcia, Kirsten Tahir, Alyssa McGriffin, Veronica Rossi, Victoria Averyard, Scott Westerfield, 
Look how cool! It's like different directions of, of authors' names. I'd really, really like to know how that plays into the book. You don't just normally throw in a bunch of other authors into your book, do you? No. <laughs> and it's gotta be some kind of clue. I've heard it's good. And I've also heard again grades nine and up, but we will read it and let you know. Now to indigo. It's such a pretty color, but it's an underrepresented color and we went as close as we could. This one's got some blue and some purple. So together they make indigo. That's what I was hoping. Okay, the book jumper. This one is by Michelle Glasser. We did talk about this in our March book haul. I am actually also in the middle of this book as well. Michelle Glasser, it's been translated from German and I've been carrying this book around for a little bit now. Um, everybody who sees this cover has to grab this book and read the jacket. Whoever designed that book cover did an awesome job. This book cover is like the perfect summarizing a book in a cover, which I know is their goal, but look at this. Look at this cover. It's the basic concept plot for the book, just in a picture. I love this cover. And apparently everybody else does too, because <laughs> now I have so many people who want to read this book. I just love how her dress looks like it's actually made of paper. Paper. Well, look at the prints. He's totally made of paper. And the tree, look at the tree. The tree is oh, made. Wow. Look, and you, you can see the letters on the tree and the leaves. It's just the most beautiful cover. Anyways, this Very book creative. is about a girl. And this is why everybody wants to read it. The librarians, the assistant principal. There were more. They're all gonna have to just be on a holds list, I guess. And so I might have to buy more copies because I don't think two is going to be enough, actually. This one is about Amy Lennox and she is going to the Lennox house in Scotland to visit and her grandmother teaches her that she's a book jumper. So she can like jump into the story and interact with the characters. There's another book jumper and they have to save the day because somebody's trying to like steal. Steal the books she jumps into. Like steal from the books. You're gonna have to see how we totally wrap this up in an upcoming weekly reads episode. <laughs> For Violet, The Return, the newest book by Ridley Pearson. This picks up with the Kingdom Keepers have traveled back in time and are stuck in the time of the opening day of Disneyland. And the villains have followed them. Can they defeat them and get back in time to their own dimension and time? This is a fun series. And I have so many students who are so engrossed in this series and just absolutely love it. And some of them weren't even giant readers at first. They were just in love with Disney and Disneyland and the and the concept just captured them and they haven't stopped reading. I just love how he always manages to come up with a different plot line that the villains get involved in. Kind of brings it to life. And it makes you want to go see which movies those villains were in, because I sometimes forget. And they don't just yeah. include the ones like from the Disney shows you're familiar with, ones from some of their offshoot films like Black Cauldron. Black Cauldron was a big film, it's just a long time ago and people don't remember it. Yeah. Now to our pot of gold! My cover has gold on it. Basically the pot of gold is our favorite <laughs> book of the moment. This one, if you have not seen our Beauty and the Beast book haul, we are not going to tell you much about the book because you have to go see the Beauty and the Beast book haul with reviews because we did review every book in there. And, and it still them. is my favorite movie. But there's pretty gold. This book has a story within a story within a story. A little bit kind of like it's a dream true. within a dream <laughs> within a dream. <laughs> but it's not a dream, it's a story in a story story. You have the story you know and then Beast gives her the library. This is the story of the library. I guess that's a good way to put it's it. It's a lot more magical than it appears. And then you have the story with death and love, for those of you who are familiar with that. And you have the story, Belle, as she's encountering the things and what the and death throw at her. And you have the story inside the book in the library that Belle gets sucked. It's just so unique and so engrossing. I just absolutely love this book. And Jennifer Donnelly is a great author to begin with. If you haven't read her other stuff, you really should. Okay, Some of the other books she's read, written that I, and I've read several of these. These Shallow Grave. Oh, that was that a good That was a one. good mystery. It's definitely high school. Definitely. Mm, grades nine and up. Just about the Waterfire Saga. That one's I a liked really one. fun thriller adventure with mermaids. Now it's time for my pot of gold is Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein. We've reviewed a couple of his others in previous videos, so feel free to look back. I liked this book because it follows the story of 12 12 year olds who get the chance to go to the brand new library's library lock-in. And this really awesome library has all these virtual reality elements to it, holograms, video games, that all are book related and it's just really cleverly done. But when morning comes, the doors don't open 
and they have to use those different things in the library to solve the clues to find the alternate exit to the library. And if they succeed, they get to be the library spokesperson. So it's every kid's dream, maybe not as much the librarians, but it would be fun to be, see that library. General library. Ooh, like Mrs. Basley Frank Filer, but with a library instead of a museum. And it's really hard to pick one book to go with every color. We'd love to know what your pot of gold is as well. So please comment below to let us know what that is. Be sure to like and subscribe. Now, liking the videos and commenting just helps other people to find them and to share the love of reading with everybody. And it's a good time to even start getting your list ready for summer to prevent summer slide. Yeah, gotta prevent the summer slide. Well, until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.